do is I can call here main inside a main and let's let me just compile it. I'll just compile it. Okay. Oh. I'll let me do it. Give me a So guys, what I'm doing, just calling a main inside a main method. So let me run this. And now the program uh, will just keep on calling itself. And here uh, process has written something with the execution time. Now, uh, what I'll do is I'll just get this uh, main below the printf statement. Okay. And let's see what happens. Now, let me recompile and run the program. Now here you can see that the hello world is getting printed infinitely. It will keep on printing and uh, after a certain time period, it has to stop. Let's, uh, I guess I'll be having a huge memory uh, uh, with me. So it took 14 seconds for the program to stop it. And you can see that, uh, let's add one more thing. What we will do is, uh, we'll say integer i, I will use a variable uh, with the uh, registered uh, storage and I'll say, uh, let's initialize it to zero and let's say I plus plus every time we are inside the method. And after this, we'll say percent D is equal to I. Okay, and let me recompile and run. Now here you can see that what is the count Again, I have to wait for 14, 15 seconds to uh, complete this. So hopefully it will terminate in maybe another one or two seconds. Okay, the program has terminated. So this is the maximum stack size uh, for the program counter. So what really happening in this program, what is really happening inside this program is, uh, let me open annotation. So what's really happening is, uh, let's say we have a program controller and each time we are calling a function program controller is pushing a method on it so initially the program execution starts and it it will insert a main method on the stack right so program has okay better i should use paint directly This is the stack and let's say on the stack, we are pushing the main method. Every time we are executing the uh, entering inside the program, uh, it starts with the main method. Okay. So program entered inside main. The next thing we are doing is I plus plus and the hello world printing. And then again, we are calling the main method. So what program does is you are inside the main and from inside main, you are again uh, putting one more main method on the program stack. Okay. So this is the next main method that is coming on the program stack. Again, you entered inside the thing, you will increment the value of i, you will print hello world on the screen. Again, what is there? Again, the program is calling main itself, right? So it is infinite. It is infinite. That main will keep on entering inside it, uh, inside each, okay? And uh, as there is no restriction, no, uh, no value, or we are not keeping track of what is really happening, uh, how many times this i is getting increment, how many times the program will uh, uh, call the main method. There is no absolute control on this. So we, what, of, what happens because of this is, the computer have a finite number of resources. In my case, uh, we can put 64,909 uh, uh, methods on the stack. That's what I can call. So if I go all the way at the beginning of the program, I can't even go at the all the way at the beginning of the program. Okay. So uh, what it really do, doing is the, let's say, uh, at the bottom. So let's say we, this is the first push on the stack or the memory. This is the second push or uh, this is the second time the program controller is uh, putting main method inside it. Let's say this is the third time it is doing it. 
so how many times the program can put uh, something on the stack absolutely there is a limit on it so let's say 64909 so it will keep on putting main method on the program stack and ultimately there is a last location that will be used and it will put main in main on the uh, this memory location okay and here uh, it will be called as uh, this location is 64909 so now, uh, what this this main is doing again? This last main which has been called is going to increment the i value, print the hello world, and then again it will try to push a new main. Uh, it will try to push a new main on the memory, but there is no 64,910th location. This location is not available. So as this location is not available, as it is not available at all, the program will stop the function or program will hold the execution and it will say uh, this there is an error message which has been returned this is the environment in uh, c environment in which we are getting this kind of output uh, if you see the languages like python or you see the languages like java the termination message is a bit more clear the message uh, that will appear on the screen is the stack overflow or the stack memory out uh, stack out of memory right so it tells you that the program stack has run out of a space on which it can put more uh, more method. So not only recursive, if we uh, write some functions in order, if I write 64,909 functions, if I call, if I keep on calling one function from the another function, for example, if I just declare uh, a function called as fun, fun1. Fun okay, so inside fun1, I'll be calling fun2. So this is the my definition of fun one. I'll call call fun one, uh, fun two inside the fun two function two. I'll call function three, and so on, so on. So it really means that uh, uh, in this way also we can call maximum sixty four thousand nine hundred nine. It's a huge number. Generally, uh, not a single program will try to put this many uh, uh, calls on a stack at the same time or on in the memory at the same time. Uh, generally, this kind of overflow may happen. Like we are going to write recursions uh, when we uh, are going to write the programs of graph and trees, and it may really happen that uh, uh, the graph node size is such a huge one that there is no memory remaining in the system to accommodate new nodes, and the program may have to terminate. For example, there is a tree structure. Uh, let's say we are going to add two nodes at each level two nodes at each level and we start representing that particular uh, structure in the memory. So let me use a blank card again. So let's say there is a node one and each node is going to have uh, two nodes uh, as in a children's of which or siblings of it. Ah. So I'll add two more nodes for the next level and let's put links. So let's say this is a kind of tree that we have. And again, this node will have two this node will have two, this node will have two nodes, sub nodes, two sub nodes. Again, the next table will have two sub nodes. So soon we, what will happen is there will be no enough memory to accommodate more and more number of nodes. And this tree will maybe, this tree will just broke down in the, uh, maybe at the 16th or 18th or even 19th level, this tree may broke down on, even on my computer, which I'm using with some 16 gigs of RAM of eight, eight gigs of RAM. So memory is a uh, critical resource, and this this kind of tree traversal uh, will help us. Uh, a recursive calling will help us in traveling such kind of tree. So uh, this is about what is recursion. Recursion is the stuff in which the the function calls itself, or the particular task calls itself uh, with some and uh, with some different set of parameters. Right now we are not calling uh, the function with some different set of par parameters, but we can do so. Uh, it is heavily used when the job is a kind of a similar type of a, 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 a operation. And uh, we, for example, uh, let me stop this. So we will write a simple recursion program. Let's say int i is equal to 100. And let's say we are going to say reduce is the function that we will write integer reduce. And here I'll say integer j. And what we will do is if uh, j is 
uh, equal to one return one else we will say uh, reduce j minus one okay so see uh, what we are doing is we are writing two return statements basically inside this now i have a variable called as i and there is a hello world message getting printed and after that what i'll do is i'll call this reduce function reduce function with the i huh? and uh, inside this function what we can do is we can for our uh, understanding i i can put uh, or let's say I am getting a return value. I should not use any printf statement inside a function. That is what uh, we have discussed in one of the sessions. So I'll say integer uh, result is equal to reduce of i, and then we'll print the result. So I'll say percent d comma result. Okay. Now if I compile this, so you can see. Uh, the result will be the i value will get reduced so you can see that hello world 100 was the uh, value at the first time have i printed it yes hello world uh, i should write a clear message the value of i is equal to and here i'll say uh, the reduced value of i is equal to right so now, if I stop this and run it again, it will say the value of i is equal to 100 and the reduced value of i is equal to 1. And see how many times I have called a function inside the main. I have called the function inside main only one time. So, what happened is, uh, unless and until i is not reduced to the 1, if i is reduced to the 1, it will simply return 1. Okay. And if i is not uh, equal to 1, it will go to the else part and it will say return reduce j minus 1. So, whatever the value of i is will be minus by 1 and the same function has been called. So, this function will be called 99 times and at final when the j reaches 1, you are simply returning value 1. Okay. So, we got reduced value inside the result and final result has been printed. So, uh, this is how the recursion can be used. So, any doubt in what is recursion and how we can call it? So, I hope you basically understood what is recursion and how we can call it. Okay, great. So, it's a very simple story. And uh, if I ask you, uh, can anyone of you tell me how many? Uh, okay. So let me rephrase the question. Okay, so why did it stop at 64,909? Can I have I answered your question? At 10, 12, you have asked this question. Can I, are you there in the session? Yes. So have I answered your question? Or is, is the doubt is still not clear? Is the doubt clear? Okay, thank you. Uh, so let's move on. So uh, if I really ask you, uh, how many uh, how many times the reduced function will be pushed on the program memory? Can anybody tell me what is the count uh, that how many times this reduced function is getting pushed uh, or getting added to the computer's memory? Anyone? Any one of you? Can anyone tell me how many times this reduced function is getting pushed on the memory? Correct. 99 times it will go on the memory. Correct. Correct. Nice. So, obviously, if I make this value equal to 64,909, this program can't execute, right? So it will stop functioning. Okay, so that is what is the uh, recursion. Now, uh, let's say uh, what we want to do is we want to add a result of the earlier function uh, with the uh, uh, present function. For example, now what I want is 
I uh, want to calculate a factorial. Okay, so with this, this whatever we have understood, we can develop a function called as a factorial. Okay, so I'll I'll keep this reduce function uh, for our reference. I'll call the factorial function, and I'll we are passing the number j. Ah, so with the reference to the reduce function, we know that the factorial of one uh, is one. Okay, so what I can do is if j is equal to one. If j is equal to one, I return one. Else, else, what is the factorial of uh, uh, ninety-nine? Or uh, what is the factorial of two? Factorial of two will be the factorial of one plus factorial of two, right? Kind of thing. And then for the sorry, factorial of three will be one factorial of one, factorial of two, factorial of three, kind of a story. So you keep on adding the result of the earlier function: one plus two, three, three plus three, four, kind of story. What I can do is return if that is not the case. Uh, can anybody can anybody can anybody write the formula here? Can anybody tell me what should we write as an help of with the recursion to get the factorial of the number which is greater than one with the recursive? Of course, with the recursion. Obviously, I have to take the jth value. Jth value must be added. Plus, here the job of recursion comes in picture. So I'm I'm leaving only the recursive call for you people. So if I want to calculate the factorial of three, what I can do is I can get the factorial of two and add with with the fact uh, three. So it will give me the factorial of three. If I want to get that factorial of five, what I can do is I can get the factorial up to four and then add it with the value five, and then still it is a correct result for five uh, factorial of five. So can anybody tell me only the this recursive call is remaining and now we are. Writing some real real life program like we are trying to develop a function which will calculate a factorial using recursion. Anybody? Just you have to complete this right part. Factorial of uh, okay. to everyone j plus j minus one. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. And j into factorial of J plus one, J minus one. Okay, so you multiplied it. J into uh, J minus one. Ashish Musari. Okay. 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 So on the right side, what should I write after this return? Uh, okay. So let me remove this plus symbol. Let me just anyone can anyone tell me what should I write? So you want me to write j star one minus thing? Okay. Okay. Star. J minus uh, one. So if I if I go it J minus one, it will not help, right? Uh, so minus. So we we'll have written this and J star factorial of J minus one. So if I write here fact of uh, J minus one. And just put a semicolon. So there are three, four answers that I can see in the chat window. All are we are agree on using multiplication. That is correct. And there is a uh, uh, see Ashish. Uh, I am getting some answer in the private window. So Ashish is using factorial of j is equal to j into factorial of j minus one. So if I write uh, here the assignment statement instead of uh, return statement. The result will be put only inside the function. For example, this is the one answer that I've got is factorial of j is equal to uh, j star factorial of uh, j minus one. So this right part is really correct. This is absolutely fine. This is what we are going to do. But if I put this on the left side, what will happen is the function call. This is the function call, and it will have its own adverse effect. So it's like we are uh, putting the result of one function into the call of function call of another function. So only this part we have to uh, uh, correct. Maybe you are writing in the terms of mathematics. Uh, if you are speaking in terms of mathematics, what is the uh, polarity here? 
so both right both sides are equally correct right so this is with the equal with the right side no problem okay ashish you are getting what i'm saying so if you are talking in terms of mathematics these both polarities are correct they are equal factorial of j is equal to j into factorial of j minus 1 that is correct but if you are talking in the terms of program what will happen is you are getting the result from j into factorial of j minus 1 and you are trying to assign it to the fact function whose value is again you are calculating with the j and it will have its adverse with effect okay so it's not correct are you there ashish okay i wish name is there and then i have the answer j minus 1 factorial correct fine so just let me just remove this and let's try to calculate the factorial using the statement that we have written now here you can see that the only two or three i have just used uh, two lines effectively in the program uh, one is inside the first if condition and the second is inside the else condition and the function will be able to calculate the factorial so uh, let's take a very small number so we will be able to verify the factorial of it and instead of hello world we will say the value of i is equal to and the factorial of i is equal to result okay so that's what we are doing am i have i done correctly everything else is done let me verify okay now let's stop this earlier output and let's try to compile the program factorial of 3 okay uh, there is something wrong that i've done okay what is wrong let me see let me check reduced i is been called i have to call factorial of i so that's a very silly mistake i have done let me recompile the program and run it now you can see the uh, you can verify the output is correct just give me one minute i'll pause the recording and i'll stop mute myself for one minute just give me one minute i have a guess sorry for that delay okay so any doubt in recursion how we can use it from for this is a very simple application that we have studied for calculating the factor if anybody have a, any other uh, doubt in the terms of uh, recursive call uh, please ask is the recursion clear what is recursion recursion is basically we call the function in the same uh, same from the same function like we are calling a factorial inside a factorial okay or this reduce in fact i can say that you can see uh, almost everything is same just the in, in the reduced we have just added this extra part hmm. so if anybody have a confusion you can just simply try to write a reduce function which will reduce the value of j to uh, 1 and just put here uh, if i simply write here j star reduce now this reduce function and fact function both are doing the same thing so i should add one more code and j is equal to 0 uh, factorial of 0 is also uh, 1, right? So if anybody enters uh, i as 1, i as 0, then I, then, so, then should also I, I return uh, value 1 as an output. So only that that condition I have added, that whether the j is equal to 1 or, uh, or and 9, yeah, I should write it or j is equal to 1 or j is equal to 0, I should return 1, okay? So I, we can verify if I make uh, i is equal to 0, compile, and if we uh, run this, it will, it should print 1. What I'm printing now, result, factorial of i, if j is equal to 0, return 1. Okay, I want I have modified reduce function instead of fact function. So 
compile back to the backward. Okay, so now if we are we are entering the value as uh, zero, if we take a value from the user, so now the next level of this could be like from user you can take a value, printf. Uh, let's say enter value, then let's put a slash in. Can f let's say percent d comma and ampersand i okay and factorial the rest of the story is correct let's try to compile let's run Let's type zero, correct. And now you can put a menu and all everything like so. It will be running in an infinite loop if you put a menu. What has happened? Uh, process terminated with the status code five seconds. Thing to be done. Okay, enter the value. If I type four, the factor of four is twenty-four. Okay, now if I if I try something huge number, I may end up into an error. Is equal to zero. Why? Okay. Yes. So only at the 15, I am going to the pinnacle. So it's there is no exception handling right now. We are doing or there is no error printing. So if I put a huge number, uh, the function is basically failing, right? So the call to the factorial function, the recursive call to the factorial function has failed. So now you can imagine that uh, just by entering i is equal to 15, these many times the factorial function has been called. Huh? So, like this value has been generated. So, 15 times the factorial function has been called and we are reaching to a huge value. If I keep on increasing the value of i, uh, I may end up into the situation where the integer data type is no longer supporting the that huge value. And I have to change the data type from int to the int size of int is 4 bytes. So, let me say uh, printf percent d comma size of int uh, this is the four byte uh, variable in my case in my system uh, integer over to it say one four bytes Okay, so size of integer is four bytes. Now, if I want to accommodate a bigger number, you can try it instead of int. You may return a float or maybe a double kind of a story, uh, which uh, may be able to keep uh, bigger numbers compared to integer values. Or you can type, uh, you can use unsigned integer uh, to return a bigger number compared to what a int can return or what a, 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 a integer with the both negative and positive polarity can return you can use unsigned integer so this is about a recursive call then there is a concept called as an a tower of Hanoi. Huh? so this is a very simple concept called as uh, wherein there are three towers and we keep on shifting ring from uh, one tower to the other tower uh, and ultimately we transfer all the rings from one first tower to the last tower so uh, how you will do it and uh, there is a uh, restriction that you can't put a bigger ring on the smaller one so let me explain what is a tower of Hanoi issue 
So let's say uh, we have a simple tower. Let's say this is the tower and each tower, uh, we will be putting a ring. Uh, so let's say uh, this is the bigger ring that we have uh, put on the first tower. And there will be a comparatively smaller ring at the second place and an even smaller ring at the top. And then there will be another two towers in the system. This is the first tower and let's say this is the second tower and there is, there is a third tower. So what we have to do is we have to shift these all three rings from the tower one to the tower three. And the restriction is you cannot put a bigger ring on the top of the smaller ring. So you have an option like you can shift this uh, smaller ring in the tower number two. And then uh, if we shift, let's say in the second scenario, if we shift this uh, ring number first top ring in the uh, let's say tower two, this is the smallest ring. Then this second ring that we have cannot be shifted to the tower two because you will be putting a bigger ring on the top of a smaller ring. So that is not allowed. This move is not allowed. So what you have to do is you have to shift this bigger ring in the third tower. Now you end up into a, a loop, right? If I do this, if this move is possible, but if you do this move, that is putting a second level ring, putting a second level ring into the third tower. Let's say this is the second ring has been inserted into the third tower and this move has been taken. Now you are out of moves. Why are you are out of moves? Because this is the biggest ring that has been uh, that is available in the system. So if you can't put this biggest ring on the top of the uh, uh, smallest ring, or you can't move it to the second tower, but you, what you can do is you can shift this smallest ring again on the top of the first ring, on the top of the first ring, and then. Uh, you can, if you do this, if we take this move, if we take this move, let me erase it here. Let me erase it. If this move is done, now you can move this biggest ring from the first tower to the second tower. If we take this move, if we take this move, tower of an eye move, we will be having the biggest ring in here and the second and the first ring in the third tower. Now our main goal is, our main goal is we want to shift this uh, biggest ring, uh, all the entire tower into the last uh, section. So what you can do is again, move this uh, very first small ring into the first tower. Okay, so let's move it. Let's move this, the first ring into the first tower. Let's say we have inserted the first ring, smallest ring into the first tower. And now what you are remaining is what you have done, what you have, you are remaining with the second ring. Now this second ring can be put into the uh, second tower. And again, you can remove this and then you have basically shifted everything into the second, second tower. So this is what we are not expecting. After these all moves, everything will be shifted into the second tower, but we want to shift everything into the third tower. So this is not the optimal path that we have followed. Huh. So there must be some optimal path that must be followed to shift all the rings from the first tower to the second and from second to the third or directly try to shift it uh, in the minimum number of moves. You must be able to shift all the rings from the first tower to the last tower. So this is this concept is called as Tower of Hanoi. So let me redraw the concept. Uh, this is the problem statement that we have. So first, second and third. first, second and third. And let's say I have a, a bigger ring at the bottom, comparatively smaller ring on the top and even comparatively a bit smaller ring on the top of this. And this, this entire thing, we need to shift from first tower to the last tower. And the condition is you cannot keep the uh, bigger ring on the top of the smaller ring. So this is a very interesting stuff. Uh, I recommend you to just go through this Tower of Hanoi concept. Uh, if you read some parts of it, we will be able to figure out a formula. There is a formula where, which is applied to the Tower of Hanoi concept. And using this formula, you will be figuring out what is the move number. 
so uh, a very simple formula is available using which you can figure out whether to keep this ring in the third column or whether to keep this ring in the second column huh. or uh, if you keep this first ring into the third column column how many moves are required to shift entire number of rings into the third column if you put uh, this first ring into the second column how many moves are required to shift this entire uh, ring pattern into the third column so there are fixed formulas using which we can predict it so uh, i recommend you go through this and then we will have a discussion during the laboratory sessions uh, on the concept of tower of hanoi uh, with this uh, if there are no questions in this first unit i would like to start with this concept of stack and implementation of it and then we will write the program for expression evaluation using stack so if the there is no doubt in this any of the concept except tower of hanoi which will we shall discuss into the laboratory session or maybe when you have some basic study of the tower of hanoi concept uh, shall we start with the concept of stack what is stack and implementation of a stack yes there is something in the chat window long yeah i guess it's with the earlier concept long can be tried so shall we start with the concept of stack and tower of hanoi will be focused more into the laboratory sessions discussion of the lab sessions and that will be based on mostly on qa that uh, i expect one of you people will figure out the way in which you you will be able to calculate which moves are important how to do it so what i'm expecting in the concept of tower of hanoi from the classes i want you people to come out with the concept of how to figure out uh, which tower should be used to shift which ring so there is uh, uh, it's based on binary system yes it's based on the binary system correct who is the who, who, who posted this message ashish okay fine so uh, let's move on with the concept of stack uh, with the assumption that all the three units are uh, uh, sorry three points in the first unit are very clear to everyone and i have received many messages regarding the video video lectures guys uh, the video lecture link is already shared in the group and on the same channel all the lectures have been uploaded in fact the same link is been posted in a moodle uh, only session number 7 and 8 uh, is not available that i'll be uploading today okay on the youtube channel and i'll be posting those links into the moodle also so those who have missed the sessions can go and check it the check the sessions inside the moodle no problem so stack what is a stack okay so if we pile the things on each other if we pile up the things on each other we call the concept as stack so let's say uh, this is the this is something that i am keeping on the stack good number 1 goods number 2 goods number 3 ah we are keeping the goods on each other top of the each other good number 4 good number 5 and then i there is no space available to keep the next thing on the stack so stack is already full so how many things how many items how many goods we can keep inside the stack so if i start counting i'll say 1 2 3 4 five so there are five items that we can keep inside the stack this particular stack okay so it, this stack is capable to store five items so initially when we started storing the things inside the item let's say this is the empty stack and we haven't started storing the anything inside it so this is the empty stack and we haven't started putting anything inside a stack so uh, there are few keywords that is associated with the stack so stack basically it's a storage on which you can in which you can keep the things now if we assume that this stack is a there is a, this is the bar and you are putting the rings inside the bar So now, what restriction you have is to remove this last ring. If you try to fetch the ring from the bottom, it's not going to come out because it is locked in the bar. So the only solution you have to remove this first number ring is remove this all top rings. So remove ring number five, remove ring number four, remove ring number three, remove ring number two, and then you will be able to reach to the last ring. So there are few uh, keywords or key concepts in the stack. So what is the key concept? let's understand you are putting the ring in the bar if you are inserting the ring inside a bar so let's say this ring has been inserted in the bar so this is the first thing 
that has gone inside the bar. So this is the first item that we have inserted inside the stack. So let's say this is the first item that is inserted inside the stack. And now you have stored one, two, three, four, five items. So there are, if there are five items and the first thing that you have inserted is the ring number one. And the last thing, the last thing that you inserted is the ring number five. So if I put it in the terms of a simple order, let's say you have order one, two, three, four, five. So let's say this is the first thing that goes inside the stack. This is the second thing goes inside the stack. Third thing, fourth thing, fifth thing. Now, this is the order in which we have inserted first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Right, so one goes inside first and five goes inside the last. But now if I have to remove first, but if I have to remove the first from the stack, I'm not able to remove the first from the stack because these are the rings which are interlocked and to remove the ring number one, I have to get rid of this ring number five, then four, then three, then two, and then one. So I'll be able to remove the one at last. So let's say this is the insert operation okay and this is the remove operation that remove operation to remove from the stack the five will be removed first and the one will be removed last okay so there is a concept in data structures called as first in last out first in last out so one did go for the first time but in term to remove the one out of a stack, you have to remove all the items which are already on the top of the one, all the rings which are on the top of the first ring. So first ring can be removed only at the end, only at the last component. So in the concept of stack, we call it as first in. Anything goes first inside a stack, stack will come last out of a stack. So first in the thing, the entity which goes inside stack for the first time will be able to come out of a stack only at the last time. Or we can call this concept even in a different way. Different way, the one, okay, the one. is the one if we say last in first out, the entity which goes inside the stack at the last. Now who has gone inside the stack last? Inside the stack, we have inserted fifth ring. Now this fifth ring will be coming out of a stack for the first time. Immediately, if we start removing the items from the stack, the entity which has inserted in the last will come out of first. So in this two ways, you can refer the stack. First in, last out, or last in, first out. Even people prefer a shortcut. Or first in, last out or LIFO, last in first out, LIFO or PILO, whatever you want, right? So last in first out or LIFO is a bit commonly used nowadays, but it, it's not the only valid uh, pronunciation for the stack memory. It is also first in last out kind of a memory. Uh, there is something in the chat, last in first out. Yes, money. Uh, Shreyas, uh, you wanted to add something? Yes, sir. Huh? Uh, am I audible, Shreyas? If you wanted to add add anything, please add. Or if, if there is something uh, you want to ask. Hello? Okay. So the first in last out is also called as last in first out. So more commonly, you will find that uh, people are generally using LIFO. And uh, if somebody wants to trick you, they will ask you whether the stack is below or not. And the common thing error student make is they will say that, no, it's wrong answer. But below is not a wrong answer. It's also a correct answer because stack is also first in last out memory. So last in first out or a first in last out, both are kind of a same story, right? So the entity which entered the first will come out of a last. The entity which entered last uh, will come out of first. Okay, so uh, let me uh, clear this. And now let's say if I have array, okay. 
And the another key concept to the stack, the another key concept to the stack is uh, when there is an empty bar, let's say if I have an empty stack, if I have an empty stack, let me create a bar. Okay, I've picked up a circle. Let me pick up an empty bar. If I have this empty bar with me, a if I have this empty bar with me, and if I if if somebody asks you, uh, let's say if 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 uh, you try to remove anything from the stack, what you could remove? There is nothing inside a stack. So if you try to remove from a stack where there is nothing, this is error. This is error in term of a program that if you are trying to remove anything when there is a nothing inside a stack. So how human brain behaves? Like say if I ask you, you just give me the uh, ring from the stack. So you will approach this uh, storage. If you will approach the stack, if you approach this bar, you look at the bar and then you figure out, okay, there is no ring stored on the stack or there is no ring inserted in the, inside the bar. So you can't remove it. So your brain triggers a message. Okay, this is an error because uh, we are supposed to remove something from the stack, but there is nothing inside a stack. So there is a concept how, how the program, how the system will figure out whether the stack is uh, having some entity inside it or stack is not having an entity inside it. So this entity is called as a top of a stack. Huh. So this top represents a value. This top represents a value. That is, it points to the present element. Now, as there is no element inside a stack, the stack in the terms of programming, in the terms of programming, it will point to minus one. In terms of the real world, top will point to null, empty. Huh. So in terms of program, we'll say that the top is pointing to minus one. Minus one means it's there is nothing inside the stack. In the term of real life, we will say that the stack is empty by saying the top is pointing to null, okay? Or the top is pointing to nothing. Uh, top is pointing to nothing means that there is nothing, no item inside the stack. Now, as soon as we insert first string in the stack, as soon as we insert the first string in the stack, let's say I've inserted the first string. Now, this top is what? Top is representing the highest or the first entity or the last entity inside us, not the first entity, the last entity which is inserted inside the stack. So, this is the last entity right now, which has been inserted. So, top will start pointing to the first element. Top will start pointing to the first element inside a stack. So, now the top value has been incremented by one. So, we insert a value inside a stack top will be incremented by plus one. Now, if we add another element inside the stack, let's say we inserted one more ring on the stack. If we insert one more ring on the stack, again, the top will be incremented. And now the top will be incremented and it will point to the highest ring or the last ring which has been inserted. So my top value is two. So it also tells me that there are how many items on the are uh, there in the stack. So if I just say, ask uh, the program that how many uh, items that I have inside the stack, let's say I have, there are two items on the stack. There are two items on the stack. If we keep on adding, if we keep on adding the elements, like now there are three elements, there are three elements. Now in this case, in the left hand side, in this case, the top value is five. The top points to the fifth ring, fifth ring, okay. Now, if, if we are, let's say we try to use array to, sorry, if we decided to use array, if we decide to use array, let me take a blank sheet. Let's say if I, if we take an array to create a stack, if we start using array to create a stack and there are, let's say five locations, one, two, three, four, or let, let's say there are six locations. Now we know that the stack indexes do not start like one. The stack indexes starts with zero, and then the next will be one, then two, then three, four, and five. So these are the indexes that we can use to access the elements inside a stack. Now, if we are planning to use this array as in a stack, that means we can insert at the top and we can remove from the top. So Initially, if the stack is empty, I will say my top is pointing to minus one. Top is pointing to minus one. Now, let's say we want to insert one inside the tag. So, if I say I want to insert one inside a stack, 
before inserting one i have to point to the index zero before inserting to the uh, one inside the stack i want to go to the index zero we can use this top value of a stack theory to point to this index normally what we have done we have referred many times uh, this variable as i the i will start pointing to the zero then after inserting into the first location we will increment i by one by saying i plus plus then i will start pointing to the one then if we insert one more value then we'll say again i plus plus and it will start pointing to the second index so in the case of writing a stack program our index variable is not i our index variable is top so initially this top is pointing to minus one so what we will do is we will say this top is been incremented top plus plus so this minus one value if we increment it by one it will start pointing to the zeroth index right so i will say that now my top is pointing to zero so making top plus plus will make the value of top is equal to zero and now i if i insert this one this one will be placed inside the zeroth index. If we want to insert one more value inside the stack, then the simple thing is again call this top plus plus. Call the top plus plus one more time. So call top plus plus. Top will point start pointing to one index. So making top plus plus that is incrementing the top by one. Top will start pointing to the first value. Okay. So let's say I want to insert two now. So this two will be inserted inside the array. Now, if I want to insert one more element, again called top plus plus. So the top will start pointing to the second location and you insert number three. Let's say now I want to insert number three and I'm again calling top. Now, if this is a stack, if this is a stack, like earlier we have represented a stack like in a uh, pool, this is okay. Let's say we are representing the stack like a pool. And we are inserting rings in on the pool. First ring, the second ring, and the third ring. These are the three rings that have been inserted on the pool. This is first ring, this is the second ring, and this is the third ring. Third ring. Now, to remove these rings, in terms to remove these rings from the stack, we have to take out the first ring, which is the third one. Then the second one and then only the first ring can be removed so to remove the elements from the stack what we can do is we will say top minus minus writing top minus sorry i should not write here uh, let me erase it so if i if i top plus plus will increment the value of index and will go more and more locations forward if i say top minus minus if i simply say top minus minus what will happen is the index value will be decreased by one so if i write top minus minus the top which is pointing to the second element will now start pointing to the first element right and this location is not accessed now now the value of top will be two if we call top minus minus so what happens to the memory still the number three is inside diary but now if what if what will happen if i insert four if I want to insert four, if the new value you want to insert is four, the first thing you will do is you will say top plus plus and you will start storing four. So what will happen is by doing top plus plus, you will come back to the third in, uh, second index, but this time you are trying to store four. The present three value will be overwritten <coughs> and the new value four will be stored inside the stack. This is how uh, stack with the array will work. Now, if you do top plus plus again, and if you want to store fifth number, then the top will start pointing to the third location. And then here, fifth number will be stored. <coughs> so if you do top plus plus again, top will start pointing to the very next index. Let's say you are storing eight here, randomly, directly eight you want to store. Now, if, if you want to remove the eight from the, stack if you want to remove this number from the stack you have to just call top minus minus if you call top minus minus the index will stop pointing to the fourth location index will start pointing to the third location if you again want to remove this five from the array or five from the uh, stack you just do top minus minus and index 
will start pointing to the second location. Again, you want to remove this top minus minus top minus minus all the way you come back to the zeroth index. Now, if you again do top minus minus, now the top element has already reached the value of minus one. If you do zero minus minus, if the value of the top is zero, if this is the top, this is the top, and if you do minus minus on the top, obviously from the zeroth value, top will go all the way back to the minus one. In the case you are calling top minus minus on the minus one negative value, then it's the job of a programmer to say that stack is empty stack is empty so if you are calling top minus minus when the value of the top is already in the negative you should print the message stack is empty on the contrary if the top variable you are you are inserting many values and you keep on inserting the values and top started all the way going up and up and up so let's say you have all reached the last value so the top has reached to the last location. Now the top variable is pointing to the last value in the array. Huh. Let's say you have stored some number 11 inside the stack. And now again you call top plus plus. Now again if you call top plus plus, ideally the array is already full and there is no space available in the stack to insert a new number. So if this situation appears that the, you have already reached to the last index of the array and you are calling top plus plus, then you should end, uh, print a message stack is full. So if you call top minus minus at the minus one value, you should print a message stack is empty. <coughs> and if you call top plus plus message at the last index, then you should print message stack is full. And in between while inserting top plus plus while removing top minus minus stack is a last in in this case, last in, first out memory. So any doubt on the stack? If anyone have a doubt in the stack, please post it in chat. If the concept of the stack is clear, great. So what we will do is, uh, we will write a program for stack using array. We will write a program for stack using a concept of array. Okay. So it's 11.7. Uh, let's stop for the session. In the next session, we'll start uh, uh, by creating a C program for implementing a stack. And there are four or five ways in which we can implement a stack using array. We will see all those four or five ways. So let's break for the session, no problem. And I'll upload uh, remaining sessions on the uh, uh, Moodle and channel by today only.